the fuse is very short today. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Standard op all apologies observed for being late. Um, I'll start off with Gaza and our colleagues from the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs tell us that today the humanitarian coordinator for the occupied Palestinian territory, Mohanad Hadi, is in uh, Gaza where he began a two-day visit. Uh, in Gaza City, he visited the uh, Nanwa school that is sheltering hundreds of families, most of whom are among those newly displaced from North Gaza governorate. Uh, Mr. Hadi just briefed the Secretary General on his visit uh, from Gaza and gave a very harrowing uh, descriptions. He said the um, conditions at the Al Mamunya school are unbearable as families lack food, water, functioning toilets, um, and are crammed into uh, very much overcrowded facilities. Uh, Mr. Hadi said that sewage at the school is running everywhere and waste is everywhere. This is not a place for humans to survive. It's beyond the imagination, he said. Later um, in the day, Mr. Hadi visited a waste collection point where our humanitarian partners are working to dispose of trash from communities to prevent health and environmental hazard. The humanitarian coordinator reiterated his call for an end to the war and the horror it has caused and stressed there's an urgent need for an environment that enables aid operations in Gaza. Mr. Hadi also visited two temporary learning spaces that are supporting students with hearing loss as the children of Gaza go without schooling for a second straight year. The Al Nezak and um, Aftuluma centers are providing educational facilities and psychological support to thousands of students traumatized by months of war. Our humanitarian partners note that 95% of the schools in Gaza have sustained some level of damage over the past year. Uh, and also a quick update for you on the uh, ongoing polio vaccination campaign. You heard quite a bit about it from our colleague Rick yesterday. Um, it, the operation continues today at four health facilities in northern Gaza. It aims to reach about 90 percent of eligible students. Since Saturday, the World Health Organization, the UN Children's Fund, and UNRWA uh, have reached more than, the, as well as with the uh, the local Ministry of Health have reached more than 105,000 children in northern Gaza with a second dose of vaccines. And a worrying note from the West Bank, where OCHA colleagues tell us that operations carried out by Israeli forces in the northern, northern governorate of Tubas and Janine today involve lethal warlike tactics that seem to exceed war, law enforcement standards. This has included airstrikes and shoulder-fired explosive projectiles, resulting in fatalities. Um, armed clashes uh, with Palestinians were also reported. OCHA is set to assess the damages in Tulkarim and its refugee camp where Israeli forces have been operating since the morning. Widespread damage to water and sewage networks have been reported and our teams will access areas as soon as the conditions allow. Moving north to Lebanon, um, we and our partners are mobilized uh, and will continue to support the scores of men, women and children impacted by the current crisis. Today, the D World Health Organization, the Ministry of Public Health, inaugurated the new Trauma and Burn Management Unit at the Turkish Trauma and Emergency Hospital in Sidon. Yesterday, humanitarian convoys successfully delivered one month of medical supplies, medicine and hygiene kits to primary health care centers in Labwe in the Balbek El uh, Hermel area. <clears throat> However, our humanitarian colleagues fear that amid escalating hostilities, the deterioration of the humanitarian situation, the demand for food, medicine, shelter, and other essential supplies is growing higher. We urgently need funding to be able to sustain the response. Unfortunately, the humanitarian appeal that was launched in the beginning of October for $426 million is currently just 19% funded. That means that only $80 million has been received so far. We urge countries and others to pledge, and not only to pledge, but to turn pledges into cash as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, we continue to work with available resources. The UN Children's Fund is partnering 
with authorities to facilitate the gradual return to learning for some 387,000 children, including those who are staying in shelters. WFP, for its part, is telling us they've already reached 2 million vulnerable people through their emergency assistance programs, as well as the regularly uh, scheduled programs. <coughs> WFP is also providing food assistance to Lebanese and Syrian people fleeing across the border into Syria. And as some of you have been uh, asking me about UNESCO's response in terms of impact on cultural sites in Lebanon, I can tell you that the um, UNESCO is providing support to the Director, Directorate General of Antiquities of Lebanon for the protection of movable, um, of movable heritage, cultural heritage. This includes establishing an inventory of artifacts from Tyre, Sidon, and Baalbek, as well as transfer and proper storage of locations seemed deemed more secure in Lebanon. UNESCO reminds all parties of their obligations concerning the protection of the world cultural and natural heritage and protection of cultural property in the event of armed conflict. This morning, back here in the Security Council, our colleague Martha Pobi, the Assistant Secretary General for Africa, told Security Council members that the war in Sudan continues to have a profound impact on the security, economic, and humanitarian situation in both Sudan and South Sudan, including in the Abyei region. She underscored that the UN Interim Security Force in Abyei, otherwise known as UNISFA, remains focused on providing support and stability in Abyei. However, the mission's capacity to provide support is constrained by the lack of support from the parties for the deployment uh, beyond 60 individual peace, uh, police officers. Ms. Pobi said the deployment of uh, the 148 individual police officers and three foreign police units as mandated, mandated by the Security Council is urgently needed. And turning to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, our peacekeeping colleagues there tell us that a reinforced ad hoc verification mechanism was launched today near Goma. This mechanism, which is part of the Luanda process, aims to monitor the ceasefire between the DRC and Rwanda, which is in effect since August 4th. The verification mechanism in includes 24 staff, uh, which includes 18 Angolans, three Congolese, and three Rwandan officers who will monitor the ceasefire and report any violations. <clears throat> Attending the event held at the border between Congo and Rwanda with the participation of the foreign affairs ministers of Angola, the DRC, and Rwanda, uh, Bintu Keita, the head of the peacekeeping mission, reiterated our continued commitment to supporting the Luanda process, including, of course, the verification mechanism to restore peace and security in the Eastern Congo. And moving back to this hemisphere, um, our, hum our humanitarian colleagues in um, Cuba uh, tell us that uh, fo following a Tropical Storm Rafael, which is expected to make landfall in the west of Cuba as a Category 1 hurricane tomorrow, we are coordinating with Cuban authorities to prepare for the impact of the storm. As we noted last week, we and our humanitarian partners are providing life-saving assistance and supporting the government's response to help 1.5 million people who were impacted by the recent Hurricane Oscar in eastern Cuba. The plan of action for Hurricane Oscar, launched last Friday, calls for $33 million to help nearly half a million people. It focuses on shelter, health, food security, as well as water, sanitation, and hygiene. And earlier today, OCHA hosted a briefing to encourage member states to support the new plan. As you'll recall, $3.5 million was allocated from the Central Emergency Response Fund last week to address the humanitarian needs in Cuba in the wake of Hurricane Oscar. In Cairo, uh, our friends at the UN Habitat launched the World Cities Report, which focuses on the challenges posed by climate change and rapid urbanization. The report, released to coincide with the 12th session of the World Urban Forum, warns that over 2 billion city dwellers could face an additional temperature increase of at least 0.5 degrees Celsius by 2040. This also, it also reveals that efforts to combat climate change in urban areas are falling short of the scale required to address the challenges. It also says that cities need an estimated $4.5 to $5.4 trillion annually to develop and maintain climate resilient systems, yet current financing stands at just $831 billion, only a fraction of what is required. The shortfall leaves cities, especially in the most vulnerable population, increasingly exposed to risk. 
Speaking of risk, today is <clears throat> World Tsunami Awareness Day. This marks the 20th anniversary of the Indian Ocean tsunami when more than 230,000 human beings lost their lives. In a message, the Secretary General said, on this day, we honor the victims and recommit to protecting 700 million people around the world who are at risk from tsunamis. The best way to do so, he adds, is to ensure that every person on Earth is alerted when tsunamis and other disasters are on their way. Uh, tomorrow, 1.30 p.m., there will be a briefing here by the chair of the working group on the use of mercenaries as a means of violating human rights and impeding the exercise of the rights of people to self-determination. And the holder of that mandate is Giovanna uh, Ranito. Edith. Uh, thank you, Steph. Um, with the polio vaccination campaign uh, wrapping up, can we get someone to give us the final numbers and an explanation of whether they reached the 90% that they say is essential? <laughs> Thank you. Um, and also on Lebanon, um, we see that like Gaza and everywhere else, there's very uh, low funding for humanitarian operations. Um, what is the UN attributing this to so late in the year? I think it's, listen, I, I think it's a combination of factors. Uh, we know that there are member states who are under their own uh, budgetary pressures. We know that there are member states that probably have cash uh, they could pledge. Uh, the private sector could also contribute. Um, let me put it this way. It's not because of lack of money in the world that the humanitarian appeals are underfunded. Gabriel. Thanks, Steph. Uh, as you know, Mr. Lazzarini will be in the building tomorrow. He will be in the building yeah. tomorrow. Presume he's uh, safe to assume he's going to be meeting with the Secretary General in the situation. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he will be. I, I, the, the SG schedule is not in my head right now, but no I'm problem. sure he will be. Yes. I think we uh, think he might do a stakeout to uh, I don't. To he will speak at the, from what I gather, he will speak at the GA uh, event tomorrow. He will be back in New York, uh, I think, a bit later on next week and may speak, uh, may speak to you at that uh, point. But I think the main public interaction will be at the GA event tomorrow. And then in, uh, going to Lebanon, uh, switching to Lebanon, uh, Lebanese media is reporting that at least 37 towns or villages have been wiped out due to the escalation al along the southern part of, uh, of Lebanon. I think they defined wiped out as they've been so badly destroyed that the villagers or townspeople have had to completely leave. What is the... Uh, Overall, what's the Secretary General's take on that in terms I mean, of trying to help get people back? Yeah, I mean, we, we are, our, our UNIFIL colleagues are reporting that they're seeing a lot of destruction of villages uh, along the blue line, right, which will make it very challenging, to say the least, for people to come back uh, when, and we hope that is soon, the cessation of hostilities is in place. Benny. Have Just a uh, quick follow-up on that. Is that on both sides of the blue line? Well, I mean, what we're seeing right now is a destruction uh, on the north side of the blue line. It's, it's obviously, and we've been very clear, that there continues to be, uh, you know, there continues to be fire coming from Israel into, um, into uh, Lebanon, and we've talked about the Hezbollah rockets going uh, into, um, uh, into, the, uh, into northern Israel. We're very much aware that tens of thousands of Israelis are also not able to go, uh, to go home, and I'm sure they also want a cessation of hostilities. And their towns are not intact. No, but we're, what we're seeing uh, on the northern end of northern side of the blue line is um, complete destruction of a number of villages. Okay, uh, any questions online? Abdel Hamid. 
Yeah, thank you, uh, Steph. Yeah, I just want to ask you again about the numbers because in Gaza in, in the last a few hours, 61 Palestinians were killed, 41 in the north. And in the West Bank, you mentioned fatalities, but you failed to mention that seven of them were killed. And there was a, a boy of a three-year-old was be, beaten, bit by a, uh, an army dog in the town of Kabatia, which was under attack this morning. And I just want to ask you, there are, I mean, the Palestinian fatalities are just, I, you I pass mean, by them without mentioning the numbers. I, uh, and again, I will ask why. Look, we have, I think we have been reporting <clears throat> the information that we have <clears throat> when we get it here about what is going on on the ground. Uh, and we've been very clear about it. I mean, Rick was here yesterday. Uh, and we've been, and uh, the reports have also been published online. So I think we've been very transparent about the suffering of civilians. In, in South Lebanon, uh, there is a video circulating, I think you saw it, with soldiers in a house had been destructed and playing the piano and saying a few things about the family of that house. Have you seen that video? I have not. Showing that I, how not. I have not. I have not personally seen that video. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, Sharon should be here already. She has, has she briefed you already? Yes. Oh. Yes. Well, lucky you. All right. Uh, hasta mañana.